I was going to say, you know how we hear sometimes like, oh, this person's a type A personality, you know, he's a driven go getter. And it's associated with like alpha males, I guess, in like the non Muslim business world, like, oh, this person, he goes after it, that kind of thing. And alhamdulillah, that was a really good reminder that you mentioned there because as Muslims, we normally think, when you think of that person, we think of the person like you mentioned, he's like in not really in control of himself. He might be treating people in a way that's not, um, not great he might be he he has like a bad temper or something and he's not really in control he's not really centered he's not really calm i think we have most respect for people who are like that they're achieving and going out taking action but they have like a calm kind of the work call like you mentioned it's like at at its core they're taking the actions they're tying the camel but they have that reliance and trust and they know that everyone has rights regardless no one cares about your goals when it comes to like akhlaq and compromising on your um other than like your relations with people and like how you speak to people so as muslim men that's something that differentiates us from um kind of non-muslims who are just focused on increasing revenue and things like that so i think that's a really important thing that you mentioned there so we're coming towards the end um we've got 10 or so more minutes is that okay Absolutely. Absolutely. And one thing I want to say too, is like, you know, one thing I heard from brother Jabril, brother Jabril Romani, he said, uh, you know, uh, I'm, I'm nothing without Allah. And I think that's an important thing to remember when you're seeing success, Alhamdulillah is say Alhamdulillah. And then, you know, do sujood, right? Because sujood keeps you humble. You're putting your prefrontal cortex, the decision-making thought, deep thinking center of your brain on the floor in submission to Allah. And you're saying, Subhana Rabbi al Allah is, you know, mm. glory to be to the most high. Right. And when you do that, it helps keep you humble because it, it helps keep things in perspective. Like, you know, some people, you know, stuff for Allah, they, they uh, commit kufr upon themselves, right? Like they, they view themselves as the superior being. And you may be superior in some areas to other humans. And Allah has blessed you with that as a test mm. and also as a responsibility. Are you like with great power comes great responsibility. So are you going to use the power that Allah has given you? Like, you know, there, there are seven types of people who are in the shade of Allah on the day of judgment. And one of those seven types of people is a just ruler. So if Allah gave you power, use that power for good. Right. And inshallah, because like, the day of judgment is 50,000 years. That's a long time. You think you're living a long life, hundred years, 50,000 years. Are you going to be in the shade of Allah because you were a just ruler with the power he tested you with? Or are you going to be like Pharaoh or, you know, stuff Allah or like, you know, some of these other examples that Allah has given us as signs of who not to be the people who are arrogant. So pray, you know, make sujood. When you find yourself having those arrogant thoughts, say, Alhamdulillah that Allah gave me these things. Alhamdulillah that Allah gave me these skills. You can be, you can be proud and appreciative of your skills, but not proud in the sense of arrogant, but proud as in like, Alhamdulillah, Allah is blessed me with this. What good can I do with it? And then make sujood. Pray, thank Allah. Ask Allah to increase you. Ask Allah to keep you humble no matter how great you become. And I truly feel that refreshing that intention every day is one of the most powerful things that you can do. Yeah, definitely, mashallah. Because we all have certain blessings and gifts. There's one thing that I talk about and that's don't run to the bank with your blessings. And what that means is like, don't go to cash it out straight away. Some Sometimes let's say someone suddenly starts getting, because one of the other people, let's carry on from that hadith, is someone who restrain themselves and you can see the emphasis in islam on kind of restraining your ego restraining your desires that's your ethical imperative how you deal with that we don't identify with our desires this is something imam tom fachin um he mentions like we don't identify with our desires desires are part of a test and our ethical kind of imperative is how we navigate and use that and it works both ways it's not just about base desires in terms of like attraction to the opposite gender or whatever else it's about how you deal with your blessings. Um, and like you mentioned there, because someone's been given eloquence, someone's been given a bit of charisma, how do you use it? You can become um, 48 laws of power Machiavellian, right? And, you know, because I see, I see some people and I recognize it because I read the books and stuff because I'm into self-development, right? But it's like, that's your test. You can either manipulate people, try and be smart, you know, uh, I'm going to control the frame and all that kind of nonsense. Or you can use it to do da'wah or like bring people closer to Islam. Or And also on that is um, we have to, we've been given an innate personality and people have been given different blessings, different starting points. Some people have like a higher level of whatever, right? Whatever blessing there is. And 
it's our responsibility to try and mold that towards the ideal, which is based on the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So, like, if you're an extrovert, if you're someone who's like that type A personality, it's not oh, this is me and this is th- that's it. Your whole journey of tazkiyah to nafs is developing yourself. And likewise, if you're an introvert in a way that's perhaps preventing you from stepping up and taking leadership or like fulfilling your roles as like a provider or as a employer or whatever. It's your responsibility to try and work towards improving on that. So it's not like you've been given a set of blessings. That's your test and your reward is from Allah. He He will assess your effort. So I think, yeah, what you mentioned before is kind of really got me thinking on that point. So unless you've got anything further to add on that, I'll move on to the question about, um, you can combine them actually. So I was going to ask you about um, iftar, the... Um, because we talked about suhoor, maintaining your energy throughout the day, having energy boosts and whatnot. Um, some optimized practices for iftar and energy towards um, taraweeh and also perhaps sleep as well. I know that's, I've left it late. Yes, but... okay. <laughs> no, 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 it's great. No, it's perfect. Uh, and we'll dive into that. So the two things I want to touch on is just one more point about the extrovert versus uh, introvert thing. So like being an extrovert is a blessing and that it's easier for you to interact with people and you're going to be better with people. But it's a, uh, it's a, uh, the double edge of that sword is the fact that maybe you're going to struggle to focus on your own. The advantage to being an introvert is that you can get better into focus, deep work on your own, but you might struggle more so with social interaction and, you know, people skills and all that stuff, but you can always leverage those strengths to your advantage and find what you enjoy, what you're passionate about, what you're good at, what's going to add value to others, and then focus and mm-hmm. double down on that while managing your weaknesses too. Uh, or delegating if you're a business owner, but still be proficient in, 